All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at IBM Think 2024, and look who I have with me, Sanjeev Mohan, Principal Sanjeev Moh, uh, XVP Gartner. Uh, Sanjeev, uh, not like our community doesn't know you, uh, but everyone knows you, and uh, I'm so happy to host you here at IBM Think 2024. I'm pretty excited to learn more about. Uh, What's happening here? But for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about what's happening at Sanjmo. And uh, like every year, you are at IBM Think 2024. So what excites you? So, Robert, uh, something that you may not know, in July, which is like two months from now, it'll be three years since I left Gartner. Oh, yeah. three years already. Three wow. Years. I cannot imagine, imagine how much fun I've had every single day in three years uh, running Sanjmo. Oh, nice. It's like liberating creating content, a lot of content with you. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, and and also uh, visiting conferences, learning about what's going on uh, to make it even more fun. When I left Gartner in 2021, I had no idea something called generative AI is going to take over. Oh, yes, so exactly. So now if you couple this excitement in the space with AI and the independence I have to cover this space, uh, it's just uh, the best of both worlds. And I'm seeing it very closely, to be honest, Sanjeev. <laughs> it's like, uh, I know we've uh, you know collaborated on a few meetups, we've been at uh, conferences like these together, yep. and uh, I've seen you obviously, uh, you know, off air as well, like working so hard on the white papers, the blogs, and every all the insights that you share uh, with our community. And uh, so it's always good to see uh, what's happening. So three years, congrats on that, Thank first you. of all. Almost. Yes, almost three years. We're getting there. Um, so at IBM, I saw you at the keynote and you've yeah. been attending most of the sessions yeah. here. You've been talking to a lot of uh, clients, community, partners mm -hmm. that IBM has. So what has stood out to you? Any key, key takeaways that you would like to share with our audience from the keynote? Yeah. So as we, as I'm attending these keynotes, right. my head is literally swimming with information and I cannot wait to get back onto my laptop and and write a blog right. on my key findings. Yeah. Uh, because what I've seen is super exciting. Uh, IBM has a renewed focus and energy that I have not seen before. Love it. Two years ago, I think 2022, IBM decided to uh, strike a partnership with AWS. Right. And it was such a pivotal moment because that's when IBM management realized that you know what, let's not go all into IBM Cloud because customers have all kinds of all, cloud providers. Yes, exactly. So, so having that partnership and being a sort of a cross-cloud platform on top of AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, hybrid, on-prem, right. and their own, their own cloud. Right. So that was was an inflection point in IBM history, and today what I'm noticing in 2024 is that story has come together. Uh, IBM is now laser focused on shockingly data and AI. Not they're not interested in other pieces. Uh, case in point, just at this conference they announced their partnership with Palo Alto, Palo Alto for security. Right. Yes. But they're not interested in cyber security. They let Palo Alto do that. They're only interested in data security. Wow. So yeah. that laser focus I have not seen before. So that's something, you know, pretty interesting because I know one of the topics was also picked at the AMS session with uh, Arvind, yeah. uh, right, this, yes. uh, the chairman and CEO of IBM, right. and I was there as well, and yeah. uh, so much discussion around it. What did you think about the AMS session? There were so many interesting right. topics, and Arvind was outstanding in terms of, you know, he, he's a visionary, right? Yes. Yeah. He's visionary, he's a straight talker, he's not interested in, in you know, like sugar coating. Oh, yes, exactly. And, and he, he's so knowledgeable. You like throw him a question, like somebody asked him, uh, why is it that IBM has only like Verizons and Delta and all these big customers on stage? And he goes, because they have a brand recognition. Machine. Why right. would we bring a small company and then have to explain what they do? <laughs> it's like. So true. So, so that kind of like, you know, he's ready. And uh, the question, so I had a question, by the way, on what about like your, your chips, your, your own custom chips, and uh, and uh, this was actually in a follow-up, yes. we had a session with Rob Thomas uh, and Dario Gill, and they said, 
we don't want to be the general purpose provider right. of anything. Right. We want to be purpose built. We know we are not going to compete in the hardware space. Yes. So those chips are not important to us. They're for our own AI acceleration. We're not talking about that. We were, we're talking about our Excellent. own LLMs with purpose built, our own code assistants, purpose built. So right. everything is focused now on solving their client problems. It is something pretty interesting because I feel the like they're definitely innovating. They're always uh, you know out there doing so many interesting things in the space, which is uh, you know which which like I've seen the announcements made in the keynote as well. Like yeah. we've heard about Instruct Lab, IBM Concert, in uh, obviously what's the next data, what's the next governance. Yeah. But what are your thoughts around those? Like so. Interestingly, what I'm, I'm noticing is that uh, there are two things happening. First of all, IBM has a rich history of innovation and products. Right. Like literally 100 years of you know, development. So what they're doing is they're taking their existing products and then the second piece is they are modernizing them with access to LLMs. Right. And, and then they're, they're putting the, the uh, consumption layer on top. Right. So that is, so uh, for example, they've got uh, a bunch of databases. They've got security software like Guardium. Now Guardium, uh, which is a very old data security, now it's going to also monitor the usage of AI models. Right. Use an LLM to provide the natural interface and some recommendations. Yes. And be part of what's an extra governance. Exactly. So, so using what you have and infusing it with AI is the key to success. I, and 100% I agree because it's always been a story where, you know, there are so many enterprises or so many vendors as well. They always can try kind of try to do something new. Yeah. It gets like, oh, Gen AI, we, they kind of, you know, obviously get sometimes they kind of get lost in the hype. Yeah. But IBM knows their game pretty well in terms yeah. of what their strengths are and how can they recapitalize on the strength too, right? Now they know. Yes. I think I think they were lost for some time when they were trying to do everything and be everything to everyone, but now they're not. I'll give you a couple of more examples. Yes, please. Uh, there is a huge focus on code assistance. Right. For coding. Right. So they're using their Granite LLM. Yes. But they're not interested in making a generic coding assistant. They are very, very uh, focused on mainframe, COBOL to Java, or yes. modernizing Java. Yes. So this is not like, you know, let's do Python to C++. So they, they, are, they know they have customers in COBOL yes. who want to modernize their mainframe. Yes, so exactly. I, I love it. And I saw the same, uh, I heard that from Rafiq as well in the keynote yesterday. Yeah. And it is a game changer for sure. So since we're here at IBM Think, I don't want to miss this opportunity where I want to hear from you what are your main key takeaways from IBM Think 2024? It's one of the biggest conference for IBM. And there are so many customers around as well, and I'm pretty sure as an analyst, you talk to a lot of customers, partners, community, but also the leaders here. Right. So what are your key takeaways? I would say uh, there are three t uh, key takeaways. Yes. First, infrastructure, uh, IBM wants to be uh, uh, kind of the infrastructure layer for hybrid, right. hybrid cross cloud. Yes. And uh, the second piece is everything is uh, underlaid by AI. Mm -hmm. And the third piece is automation. Automation. Which right. we haven't talked about. So uh, again, going back to this whole idea of use what you have. Right. So they have Red Hat, OpenShift. Yes. For hybrid. They've got uh, HashiCorp now. Yes, They've big acquisition. Big acquisition. They've right. got Ansible. So, so having that automation be the the key glue right. to all of these different pieces. So hybrid AI and automation are the three pillars on which the new IBM stands. Hybrid AI automation, love it. Uh, Sanjeev, uh, it is always a pleasure chatting with you on the Ravid Show, but like one that. quick question for our audience. I know you write a lot of blogs, you'll maybe write a key takeaways somewhere in detail as well. Where can people find that? I know there's a Medium channel, there's yeah. LinkedIn. But it's, it's, 
very easy to find my Medium channel. Nice. Uh, it's Sanjmo, right? which is my company, dot .medium. But dot .medium. And I'll share a link with them yeah, as well. So, yeah. Also, I have a podcast channel, which is not that easy to find. And it's, okay. it's kind of... I'll, if, I'll share a link. Yeah, yeah for sure. I know it's on YouTube. So, yes. yes. Correct. All right. Correct. This was great. Thanks for doing this, Sanjeev. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Likewise. And uh, I'm pretty sure uh, I'll see you at next conference. Yes. All Thank right. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.